So our um, topic for tonight is HO role in operation theatre. Okay. So insyaAllah I will spend about um, uh, one hour, okay, um, to uh, sh uh, share this topic with you all, okay. So what we will cover is, okay, first is uh, OT list, okay, so your elective or planned OT list and your uh, emergency OT list, okay. And then uh, we'll go through what are the common operation that HO need to assist in operation theater, okay? And uh, the main uh, focus of our discussion tonight is uh, HO role before, during, and after surgery, okay? Okay, and we will end with what you need to do to prepare yourself, okay? So, for those who has joined the session, can you please comment uh, whether you are a medical student, okay, medical graduates or working houseman, okay? And if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask a question in the comment section, okay? I will answer uh, throughout the session later, okay? And please stay till the end of our session because uh, I have important announcement. Uh, we have a free seat giveaway, okay? So three free seats for our clinical skills workshop next uh, Sunday, okay? So please check the comment section just after we end the live session in case you are the lucky ones, okay? And I have important uh, announcement about uh, the upcoming ONG online course as well. Okay. So, welcome Muhammad Shafwan Aman, medical grade waiting for HO intake, okay? Okay, Shamim Amiruddin. Okay, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Medical grade juga. Okay, so let's start with elective uh, OT list, elective and uh, emot. Okay. So basically, OT list ni is the list of operation lah, okay. So, um, okay. Uh, before that, before that, uh, okay. Hi, Sarah Adli, Nuliani Ramli, Humaira Zulkarnain, Darren, Jivya Shini, Ibna Mursal, okay. Lot of medical graduates tonight. Okay, so before we uh, proceed further, okay. Uh, I would like to know what you know about uh, your role in operation data. Okay, so can you all comment? Uh, what what do you think uh, HO role? Kalau you jadi houseman dekat dalam OT, okay. Uh, what is your task? What is expected from you? Okay, so that I know what is your background uh, knowledge on the topic before we discuss further. Okay, what was your experience during medical student? What do you do in the OT? Okay. Okay, so Darren Lim shared. So his oral is scrubbing. Assisting, taking down the diagnosis, operation name on the whiteboard, okay, OT board. Okay, Anna Karina said inform NS, book operation, uh, OR, operating room, prep patient, okay. So, Hidayah Muhammad Nasi, know the case, prepare and know the pre-op investigation done, investigation, okay. So, check pre-op investigation, prepare post-op documentation, Okay, Ferdiana assist the doctor. Yes, but you know, you need to know uh, exactly how to assist, okay? Specifically how to assist. Nur Farahin Sapilin holding the suction tube. Uh, one of it lah, tapi ada banyak lagi. Okay, so Shamim, a uh, prep patient, grip, uh, observe and assist, okay? Hanis Nabila make report at the end. Okay, good, okay? So, Okay, so um, kebanyakan 
um, uh, medical grad so okay um, apa ni kita kita okay usually uh, kebanyakan uh, medical grad atau houseman yang baru ni uh, ingat dia orang punya task dalam OT tu is just retracting, just observing okay or assisting okay. This is because during our medical student time, during undergrad time, so usually kalau kita masuk OT we will be assisting elective cases. So elective uh, sebab kalau you masuk OT waktu student usually is 8 to 5 kan uh, office hour. So of office hour are usually elective cases. So these are planned cases yang kita dah plan few months before um, untuk buat operation tu patient dah ada, uh, ada proper pre-op uh, assessment and preparation and usually elective uh, cases uh, these are uh, more difficult um, cases lah okay contohnya uh, patient with um, uh, apa ni um, uh, tumor cancer okay uh, so the, the the surgery are long and more complicated and involve uh, more people means your consultant will be there your surgeon will be there and your MO will be there so sebab tu kalau kita medical student we will end retract uh, in the OT or just observing the case lah. Okay but uh, when you are a houseman okay um, when you are a houseman okay uh, you you may be posted to elective OT but most of the time you are assisting the emergency OT or your emote lah. Okay so bila you dekat emergency OT, emergency OT usually run 24 hours. Okay this are uh, case yang macam um, uh, Unplanned lah kalau elective ni we prepare patient for few months before. So emergency ni patient uh, have some illness or um, accident ke and then kita book untuk OT. So we prepare patient over few hours or, or few days only okay. And uh, for that reason bila you you in charge dekat emote atau emergency OT ni okay uh, because it runs 24 hours and also outside office hour usually the the uh, orang yang involved dalam emergency OT ni tak ramai. Usually it is the operating surgeon, operating surgeon atau MO yang in charge OT uh, are usually the more senior medical officer or registrar. Okay. Uh, and then uh, ada satu je assistant that is you lah houseman yang assist. Okay so you'll be first assistant to your operating surgeon which is usually your MO for emergency OT. That's why we really really need uh, a functional uh, assistant okay operate um, during the surgery okay so you need to know your role okay so that you can uh, assist the uh, emote properly and the surgery uh, akan run smoothly lah okay so um, let's go through uh, what are the list uh, of common operation okay that HO need to assist. Okay, this is emergency list lah. Okay. So, okay. For surgery, what uh, what are the common ones? Can you all shout out in the comment section? Okay. So, kalau you, uh, uh, what are the common surgery in surgical department that HO need to assist? Okay, so um, later I fill up this table, okay, and upload the slides uh, in my Telegram channel so you can see all the listed uh, common operation lah, okay. So, yes, yeah, surgery. So, usually this is acute abdomen. So, kalau appendicitis, appendicitis uh, then you'll do uh, appendicectomy, okay. Uh, usually most center are using laparoscopic, okay. If it's, um, apa ni? Uh, usually a laparoscopic, okay. And then your um, other acute abdomen cases lah, okay. Uh, perforated gastric ulcer, okay. Acute cholecystitis. Okay, then you perform a cholecystectomy. Okay. Um, okay, obstructive hernia, addition colic. This is all your, uh, apa ni, 
GI uh, punya operation lah okay and then what else apart from your GI okay kalau dekat surgery you will need to help with Okay, so okay, let me type. Um, okay, um, have you heard about sulcerization of carbuncle? Okay. Okay, so uh, okay for okay for carbuncle abscesses uh, ulcer if uh, the lesion is on your uh, trunk okay it belongs to under surgical team but if the carbuncle abscesses or ulcer is on your limbs okay then it is under ortho okay okay so let's go to ortho. Okay, what are the common cases you will need to um, uh, assist in orthopedic? Okay, amputation. So this is your BKA, below knee amputation. Okay, sometimes you do AKA as well, above knee amputation. Okay, uh, your ORIF, open reduction and um, internal fixation of any implants, nail, okay. For total hip replacement and uh, TKR, THR, usually we do it as uh, elective, okay. Hip replacement, knee replacements are usually elective surgery, bukan emergency lah. So we, did, we are discussing about emergency, okay. Okay, so your uh, wound deprivement, okay. Uh, those uh, uh, which we cannot do under local anesthesia original, okay. Okay, so I think we covered the common one. Okay, now let's move to ONG, okay. So what are the common cases you will need to assist? Okay, so usually uh, emergency OT which run uh, 24 hours, okay, ada surgery, ada auto and ada ONG lah, okay. So, okay, Muhammad, TAPSO, TAPSO are usually elective, okay, kita plan, okay. Uh, elective season pun elective, okay, so this is for um, emerg uh, okay. emergency, so usually you will need to assist Emergency low section, cesarean section. So this is fetal distress, your fetal brady, your apa ni, uh, labor dystocia, okay. Okay, what else? For miscarriage, miscarriage you will need to do dilatation and curettage, okay. Okay, or ERPOC, the other terms, okay. And then uh, for ectopic, Okay, ectopic pregnancy, you will need to do laparoscopy or laparotomy, okay. Okay, so I think we've covered all. Okay, so these are, these are the common operation that HO need to assist in OT, okay. So you can actually, um, uh, you can actually um, see the step by steps how to do this procedure in your Ampang HO guide and also in, J, in JB manual of surgery, okay. So they actually list down uh, step by step how to do this common operation okay so you you don't really need to know or uh, memorize all the steps lah. But, but basically you need to have an idea of what 
uh, uh, other steps yeah, in each operation because you will need to assist later, okay? Okay, so this is an example of elective um, list. Okay, this is elective list for gynae, okay? So in, uh, because, uh, okay, for emergency, okay, so this is emergency. For emergency, your OT list will be in your uh, emergency uh, uh, in in your operation data lah. Okay, so kalau you open and masuk dekat OT, dalam OT, there will be a large board, okay, and they will list down. Okay, because uh, for surgery, uh, emergency OT list, ada berapa pending case. Okay, auto ada berapa pending case, ONG ada berapa pending case lah. So, that's your OT list. Uh, for emergency uh, OT, okay, it's in the um, operation theater lah, okay. While for elective, because this uh, this uh, operation uh, was planned beforehand, okay, so we have a proper list. So usually, um, apa ni, um, few days before dah ada uh, proper list lah. So, uh, this is the diagnosis. Okay, you can see the list uh, diagnosis and uh, procedures. Okay, uh, actually kita akan ada patient punya full name, detail, okay, operating surgeon or operating team. Okay, so if you are in charge for um, elective OT, okay, so you need to find this list or maybe you are the one who need to prepare the list. Okay, make sure patient dah, dah, dah in the ward. Okay, dah. Uh, admitted. Okay. Okay. So, this is an example of your uh, elective OT lah. Okay. Okay. So, now let's move forward to HO role in emergency data. Okay. Our role is more just than assisting or retracting. Okay. So, there, there are things you need to do before the operation, during the operation and after the operation. Okay. So, uh, these are the things that I gather from my uh, colleagues, okay, medical officer um, and uh, surgeons in various departments and this knowledge will be beneficial for you in all surgical base department means in surgery, in orthopedics and in ONG as well. Okay, so the the, the same rules or the same expectation or the same HO role in uh, each uh, respective department lah. Okay, okay, so let's go through. So before surgery, before surgery start, what you need to know is first, is you need to know the keys, okay? So, kalau you jaga patient dekat dalam ward, so you need to know the keys, right? Uh, what is patient uh, admitted? How many days already? Okay, what is our current plan? Why we cannot discharge patient yet? Okay, so for um, uh, OT pun sama. If you want to assist uh, a surgery, you need to know the case, okay? So, uh, it is a very, very, very bad habit kalau you nak assist OT, you tak tahu langsung kes apa yang you nak ambil. Datang scrub and just pain and drape, okay? Uh, uh, so, what I recommend to you is, okay, uh, make a habit, make some initiative to actually know the case and know the procedure so that you can really benefit from the time uh, and energy spent assisting the surgery, okay? So, contoh, now for example, if you are assisting uh, elective OT, okay? So, you need to find the elective OT list, okay? So, contoh, ialah esok you akan in charge elective OT for gynae, okay? So, today before you go back, uh, go and find the OT list, okay? the elective at least for tomorrow. So at least you know what are the cases that you'll be assisting tomorrow, okay? And if it will be even better if you go and find the patient in the respective ward and just make sure that the consent is ready, okay? The, all the pre-op investigation have been done and uh, normal, okay? Um, if the operation in uh, require certain implants, okay, or for example, for orthopedication, okay, so you need to make sure that uh, a patient has already paid for the implant. The implant has, uh, we have received the implant lah because usually implant ni kita kena order from drug, uh, apa ni, uh, 
a certain company kan okay so make sure kalau uh, those implant yang uh, patient kena bayar patient dah bayar uh, and the implant has arrived okay and then we have auto the implant so it's so they're ready to be used during the operation okay so uh, okay please check okay uh, get to know your cases okay what are the diagnosis okay what the uh, apa ni pre-op investigation okay and make sure everything that you need for the operation is ready or planned okay uh, for example macam kalau certain uh, operation they will need uh they uh, they will need uh blood products okay for example you are assisting uh elective cesarean section for two previous car and uh placenta previa okay so when we expect uh much bleeding so biasanya the order is to push patient to ot with two pain pack cell Okay, so kalau you tahu macam tu, you have to remind the HO in the ward. Okay, so tomorrow make sure eh, patient ni bila push OT, uh, ada to pump pack cell. Uh, you all dah order ke dia punya plat apa semua. Okay, so you need to know the cases and make sure patient is uh, ready um, and optimized before the surgery. Okay, so itu kalau you jaga elective. Kalau you jaga emergency macam mana? Okay, sebab emergency dia punya list dekat dalam OT kan? Okay. Uh, so what you can do is, uh, for example, okay, um, you, esok you kerja malam on night shift start pukul 8 in in imod. Okay, so before you come, okay, at 6, at 7 o'clock tu, uh, you boleh contact you, you punya uh, colleague, HO colleague yang jaga the emergency OT during the day. Okay, ask, ask them to, oh, boleh tak you tolong screenshotkan OT board so that I roughly know lah what I will be assisting tonight. Okay. Uh, so uh, then you know berapa case yang pending. Okay. Uh, so you can uh, roughly know the case. Okay. And kalau emergency OT because you are in in OT already. Okay. And patient hanya akan masuk uh, bila uh, we call for OT. Okay. You can um apa ni, receive the patient upon the arrival to OT together with NS team. You can, you can flip through the BHT. You can quickly make sure um, uh, uh, apa ni, the pre-op investigation. So what was the um, apa ni, um, diagnosis. How do we arrive to the diagnosis. Okay. And who actually order the uh, operation. Okay. Because uh, for emergency OT, okay, sometimes you're operating MO, okay, dia tak, uh, apa ni, uh, sebab someone else book the operation, okay, mungkin MO yang dekat um, uh, uh, emergency atau MO yang dalam ward, okay, so because your MO, uh, kalau dia orang on call dekat OT, dia are 24 hours in the OT. So, kalau case tu book early morning, kita baru nak operation malam, so your operating MO actually haven't seen the patient yet. Okay, bila masuk tu baru baru kita uh, dapat tengok patient lah. Okay, so it will be helpful if you roughly know the case. Uh, you know the investigation, you know what was the presenting complaint, how we arrived to this uh, diagnosis and we decide uh, for certain operation. Okay, and uh, you need to know all this uh, not just to provide this info to MO in case they ask you but they also uh, will be beneficial for your training, okay? So, bila you tahu macam mana kita uh, suspect patient ni ada certain diagnosis um, and we decide for, to do OT, that, that will be beneficial for your training. And for me, I will be very interested to know uh, what we decide for, to do operation. What what are we expecting in the, uh, apa, as our apa, oper operative finding, okay? So, that makes... Um, apa ni, our, our role atau or, or our work as houseman in the OT walaupun kita assist je, uh, we can actually learn a lot and it is very interesting. Okay and I, I also love to uh, re uh, revise the anatomy, the muscle, the uh, the vessels, everything. Okay so but uh, for you to be able to uh, appreciate the anatomy and everything uh, you need to do your homework lah. Okay, so kalau you tahu esok you, you, are, you are assisting a TAPSO. Okay, it's a long surgery. Okay, uh, so why not you, uh, apa ni, revise the regional anatomy, what was the blood supply. Okay, so uh, uh, nanti bila you assist, assist surgery, it will be very interesting lah kan because you know your, you know your stuff. Okay, okay. 
the very first point. You need to know the case. Okay, so find ways to know the case for elective surgery. Find the elective list and go and see your patients beforehand. For emergency OT, you can get the emergency OT list from your friends from previous um, shift. Okay. Okay, next, once patient have arrived to the OT, okay, so you will need to prepare relevant scans, okay. Uh, this is especially for orthopedic cases where it involves x-rays, okay. So, you can letak lah dekat x-ray box and pastikan you punya orientation betul, left, right, okay, up, down, semua. And if you're assisting macam um, craniectomy, okay, so put up the... Um, CT or MRI okay so if a patient have relevant scan that might be helpful for your uh, that is needed by your surgeon during operating so you put them on a straight box okay and um, in most hospital okay the primary team means kalau uh, you are houseman um, surgery Okay, the prophylactic antibiotic should be prepared by primary team, bukan NS team. Okay, so NS team dia hanya akan prepare anesthetic drugs sajalah. Or the induction, propofol, everything. Okay, but the prophylactic antibiotic must be prepared by the primary team. You lah, kalau you have your surgery, have your surgery lah. Then biasanya uh, antibiotic ni, dia akan arrive uh, with patient. Okay, so you, bila patient sampai tu, one of the things that you need to make sure is kalau this... Um, Operation require, require prophylax, uh, prophylaxis antibiotic, okay. Kena make sure ada lah dia orang hantar sekali dengan patient antibiotic and you will need to dilute properly, okay. You need to label it properly and pass to the NS team, okay. Okay. And then, uh, okay, as one of your colleagues mentioned just now, okay, one of your tasks before the operation start is to write up uh, in the OT board, okay, and later be before um, surgery start tu, kita akan shout out lah. So, this is example of your OT board, okay. So, kita ada list of surgeon, operating surgeon, so assistant ni, biasa kita lah. So, kalau your emergency OT, emergency OT biasanya, your surgeon is your um, CNMO or registrar and assistant is you lah, houseman, okay. And uh, an esteem siapa, uh, your scrub nurse, okay, your GN nurse, okay. Okay, so Muhammad tanya, do we need to inform MO first before give prophylactic antibiotic? How do we give antibiotic or do pre-op assessment? Pre-op assessment, plan in emergency cases. Okay, okay, good question. So first, pre-op assessment or pre-op investigation. Okay, so kalau you are in emergency, kalau in emergency, pre-op assessment ni atau pre-op investigation ni uh, should be done by your colleagues yang uh, dekat dalam ward lah. Okay, so kalau uh, patient admitted, contoh untuk profil, uh, untuk appendicitis, uh, appendicitis, we plan for appendicectomy. Okay, so uh, uh, yang jaga dekat ward tu, patient, uh, HO yang jaga patient dekat ward tu yang sepatutnya execute um, all the pre-op investigation. Okay, it depends on patient punya age and comorbid jugalah. Okay, uh, so kalau perlukan x-ray, kalau perlukan FBC, that was the role of the, your, your team in the ward. Okay. Okay, so kalau uh, prophylactic antibiotic, Okay, so we have a national guideline on uh, prophylaxis antibiotic. So you need to know uh, 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 what kind of operation uh, perlukan prophylaxis antibiotic. And the, the antibiotic might be differ depending on uh, the surgery lah. Okay, uh, kalau yang involve uh, skin, uh, lain kalau yang involve GI. Okay, so mungkin the punya prophylactic antibiotic are different. Okay, so you need to know. Okay. Uh, this is something yang HO perlu tahulah. If you're not sure, you need to ask your MO. Okay. So this is actually also a role of houseman yang in charge of the patient before sending the patient to OT. Okay. But when you are assisting the OT, in the OT, okay, you yang kena dilutekan lah. Okay. Uh, so you, you need to know as well. Kalau contohnya, um, your colleagues in uh, ward lupa nak hantar OT. Uh, antibiotic. So, they send patient saja, but you know this kind of operation need a prophylactic antibiotic. So, you need to uh, call up uh, the ward lah to send uh, prophylactic antibiotic. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I hope that answers your questions. So, uh, this is uh, a part of your OT board as well. Okay, from apart from the operating teams and NS team, kita kena mention juga apa diagnosis and what are the operation yang kita plan untuk buat lah. Okay, so this is a sample of a more complicated um, operation. Okay, so and this is an example of pre-anesthetic investigation. Okay, so um, according to patient's age and also comorbids, okay, that is reflected uh, by the ASA classification, okay. So you need to know lah ASA classification, okay. And this is the uh, indicated pre-op assessment, okay. So kalau you dekat ward, uh, HO in dekat ward, dekat ward, when you want to book for uh, operation, okay. So you need to order this um, a series of uh, this list of investigation and usually your NS team would like to know what are the result okay uh, before they can actually post the case okay uh, sebelum masuk dalam list tu dia nak ensure patient is uh, properly prepared lah okay okay so let's move on to HO role in OT so you know I already know uh, what are your role before the surgery. So you need to know your case, prepare your scan, prepare your uh, antibiotics and also write on the OT board and do shout out. Okay, so next is your role during the surgery. Okay, so uh, um, okay, so yang ni I think most of, uh, uh, most of you are already familiar with it lah. Okay. Um, sebab yang ni pun kita dah bawa medical student kan okay so you need to scrub okay you need to paint your apa ni operating field with uh, providan usually and then you will drape patient and expose only the operating uh, apa ni area okay and along the way you need to assist accordingly lah. So you need to know when to retract, when to do suction and uh, know how to make your your tie lah, instrument tie and hand tie, okay. Okay, next question from Darren. Is GSH group screen and hold or GXM part of pre-op assessment? Okay, so this will depends on uh, patient condition, okay, whether your patient is anemic or having or already have a blood loss before the operation, okay, and also whether the surgery will involve a lot of uh, blood loss lah. Okay, so it depends on your patient condition before the operation and also the op operation itself lah. Okay. Uh -huh. So not all um, cases kita akan book GSH and obviously not all kita akan GSM lah. Okay. So for example yang I mentioned tadi, kalau macam memang kita expect a lot of bleeding macam patient we operating on patient with placenta previa kan. So usually kita akan GSM to find blood to OT. Okay, that, that one means you hantar patient, you kena hantar blood lah. But usually GSM ni once patient uh, bleeding lah. Kita tak, kita tak expect bleeding, tiba-tiba bleeding. So, kita akan, we have to send the GSM. Okay. Mm. Uh, as for GSH, you need to know lah what operation you need to send GSH before operation. Okay. So, GSH ni basically you hantar sample to um your apa ni uh, blood bank okay uh, so they will uh, get to know what is patient punya blood group lah okay so in case of bleeding uh, senang kita nak order blood uh, untuk patient sebab dah tahu apa patient punya blood type lah okay so basically uh, that's the concept so JC you just send uh, a sample to blood bank but you don't order blood product. So GSM ni you send a sample and you uh, request for blood products. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to our role in OT. Okay. So why it is important for a houseman to know how to scrub? Eh, how to assist. Okay. So as I mentioned before, if you're assisting and um, emergency surgery okay so usually you are the only op 
assistant okay you are the only operating assistant that your mo or your operating surgeon have okay so they really uh rely on you lah okay and um you need to understand that when when we do em emergency um surgery okay sometimes patient is unstable or we need to do it uh, quite um fast lah okay okay for example i give you an example if you are houseman in ong so you can jam alarm 8 p.m till 8 a.m tomorrow night okay so you'll be assisting the mc yeah elect emergency caesarean section okay so in my previous hospital usually for uh macam one night over 12 hours okay so we might have apa ni um six uh, seven okay um uh, caesarean section or more okay so you need to do the same thing back to back okay so for example kalau patient ada fetal bradycardia kalau ada cord prolapse okay so uh, uh, daripada kita cut tu sampai baby out you rasa berapa lama okay ah uh, so i've asked my colleague is in ong he said uh, his record is less than one minute from uh, cut skin till baby out so if you think uh, we need to get the baby out within less than one minute do you think the surgeon have time uh, to macam instruct uh, uh, husband tolong drip dip 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 bleeding sini uh, tolong suck air okay tolong suck uh, tolong retract sana tak sempat okay so by the time you are off tank and you are the ho in charge of operation theater so you actually need to know how to assist this common surgery that we have mentioned before. Okay. So kalau macam kita buat caesarean section kan. Okay. So first your surgeon will cut the skin. So bila surgeon cut the skin, your role is uh, dab the bleeding on the skin with gauze. Okay. And then uh, apa ni? Subcutaneous uh, fat tissue kan. So your, your, your operating surgeon akan cauterize. So your role is suck the asap tu. Nanti kan you punya OT bawah macam barbecue kan. Okay. And then bila kita dah sampai dekat muscle layer. Okay. So you will need to dab the bleeding. Okay. Or suck the bleeding and also you need to retract. Okay. And we open layer by layer. In each layer you need to be able uh, to know your role. Okay. Sebab waktu kalau waktu emergency. Uh, Sejen tak sempat nak instruct. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, so that's why uh, bila you tag in OT, okay, try to observe or is possible assist the common operation that we have mentioned just now. Okay, so bila you, you are the only operating assistant, at least you know how to assist properly. Okay. Okay, we have a surgeon commenting here, Mr. Aizat Ilyas. Okay, so for clean surgery, high risk. Okay. Kita akan give prophylaxis and antibiotic. Okay. So kalau clean contaminated, dirty, contaminated, give. Yeah, okay. So this is the general rule lah on your prophylactic antibiotic. Okay. So you need to read up on the uh, guidelines of uh, pre-op punya um, antibiotic prophylaxis. Okay. And we also have guidelines on pre-op investigation as well. Okay. Thank you Mr. Aizat. Let's continue. Okay. So, bila operation dah habis. So, bila operation dah habis, surgeon mungkin pergi dekat pantry to get a rest. Houseman nanti dulu kerja kita tak habis lagi. Okay. So, you need to prepare your OT notes. So, remember kalau you do pro any procedure in your wards, you need to document. So, samalah kalau you buat operation pun, you need to document afterwards. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, so uh, dalam uh, OT notes ni apa yang you kena mention? Apa yang you kena type lah. So usually most OT, uh, most OT have their own computer system. So you can type. So you can copy, paste, edit and print. Okay. But you still need to know lah you nak copy daripada file mana, you nak paste dekat mana, which which are the details that you want to edit kan. Okay. Uh, so basically you need to document your steps step by step after operation okay so what are your 
intraoperative findings. So kita op operate tadi what was your finding, okay? And then your post-op plan. And you just see when inspection bila, suture to open bila, okay? So for all the common cases that we discussed just now, okay, uh, MO, usually you're operating MO or register as PAC. Houseman yang assist jury tu, they need to know how to do this um, OT notes because uh, yang tu common, very common operation. Okay, so you dah ada template. Okay, you just need to know where to find the template. Uh, nak paste macam dekat mana and then uh, what are the details you need to edit lah. Okay, tapi kalau untuk more larger surgery, uh, macam masa dia 5-6 jam tu, usually either your operating surgeon akan type or if they're too tired, they will dictate and you help them to type in the OT notes, okay? But it is part of your job scope, okay? Okay, so again, bila tagging, okay, bila, sebab bila you tagging dekat OT, you will have um, senior houseman yang uh, kerja malam tu, so senior houseman yang assist your MO and your MO. Okay, so you can learn from the senior houseman how to do operation notes, how to do OT notes nak buat macam mana, nak 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 uh, apa ni, nak copy dekat mana, nak paste dekat mana, nak edit dekat mana. Okay, kalau ada uh, apa ni, hospital yang tulis tangan and then you have to remember by heart lah the 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 stamps or at, at least you have a template. Okay, template then you copy dan tulis balik lah. Okay. Okay, so I have another specialist. Okay, so Dr. Mariam or NG specialist. So when you are in OT, don't ask the surgeon should I scrub. Okay, so uh, you need to know the do and don'ts in OT as well and you need to know your operating surgeon punya expectation as well. So if you are posted to OT, it's part of your job scope lah to scrub kan. Uh. So this are example of question that might irritate you Sejuna, okay. Okay, so Mr. Aizat, again. The reason I asked to read so that you know. Okay, sorry. Okay, read a bit about anatomy, physio. Okay, unless I ask you uns unscrub, read first and come back again, okay. Because kalau you tak tahu case, you tak tahu anatomy and physio, so you cannot appreciate what we are doing and you cannot be a good and uh, helpful assistant lah. Okay. Uh, so biasalah kalau macam kalau tak function tu bukanlah kita ni might linen ke apa tapi if you cannot do what is expected from you we might need to change um, kita minta senior houseman yang lain lah. Okay because if I don't have a good um, assistant I cannot perform the surgery. Tak, takkan nak buat operation seorang-seorang uh, kan. Uh, scrub nurse tugas dia untuk bagi um, instrument. Okay. Hmm. So assisting surgery is actually a very, very, very good um, opportunity to learn, okay? There's a lot of things that you can learn while assisting surgery, okay? So Mr. Aizat, the reason I asked to read so that you know at least what we are doing, dissect, okay? Not to see precisely, but at least good an idea. Yes, betul. That's why you need to know your case uh, and be responsible on your training and be responsible on your patient, okay? You uh, know a little bit on the procedure and uh, revise relevant anatomy. Kalau you buat operation dekat tangan, okay? So at least go through all the layers of muscle, what was, what are the neurovascular bundle, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, so these are uh, this is example of OT note. So I took this from um, apa ni? Uh, Ampang Hisho Guide. Okay. You can have the same uh, apa ni? Uh, documentation in your JB Manual of Surgery as well. Okay. So these are example of post-op management. So you can see it's quite lengthy. Okay. Um, so you need to be familiarized with the step. Start the lah hafal semua, okay? So uh, like I said, okay, kalau you buat uh, OT notes scan, mana yang nak kena edit? Contoh kalau you 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 assist uh, LSE scan, step dia usually sama, but operative finding mungkin berbeza lah, okay? Means the estimated blood loss might be uh, different from one patient to another, okay? And then you punya ni lah, baby baby girl ke, baby boy ke, 
the birth weight of the baby, the upcast score of the baby. So those are the things that you need to um, edit from your template. Okay, so template ni dia dah bagi macam contoh lah untuk buat alternate sebab there are some uh, details that you need to edit uh, for each patient. Okay. Okay, so having know all this, what do you think you can do, okay, before start asthma ni, okay, to prepare yourself to be a good or better assistant? Okay, come, I want to have some suggestion in the comment before I before I share what I recommend you all to do lah, okay. So, um, a lot of uh, surgeons are actually really keen to teach, okay, um, if you show interest, okay. Tapi kalau nak scrub belum lambat, okay, you don't know how to, uh, you don't know instrument, you don't know how to uh, do uh, base, apa ni, you punya basic surgical skills, you, you, your hand tie, your instrument tie. So macam uh, kecewa lah kan kalau <laughs> I jadi MO atau I jadi operating surgeon pun macam alamak kalau you kalau you tak semangat kita pun macam hmm, tak takpelah tak payah ajar lah kan. But if you show some interest, you are very proactive, uh, all your job scope ni, all what uh, we require you to do, you can do it very well, okay? And the operation okay, uh, macam go smoothly, tak ada bleeding, tak ada apa, we are, we are happy to teach, okay? Uh, we can teach during the operation, we can teach in between operation as well, sementara kita tunggu next case, okay? So, don't be afraid <laughs> with your surgeons lah, okay? Uh, okay, come. How to prepare yourself? What do you think you can do? to prepare yourself to be a better assistant in surgery. Okay. Okay. So, Anna Karina, device are important anatomy and physio, names of operation and instrument, hafal pre-op investigation. Okay. Uh, pre-op investigation ni tak perlulah hafal, Anna. Okay. You go through the um, guidelines of pre-op investigation, so are you familiar? So, at least you kena tahulah uh, asal classification tu. Asal one apa, asal two apa, asal three, asal four apa. Okay. So, in general idea. So, kalau asal one, usually apa pre-op investigation yang kita kena ambil. Okay. Um, uh, so, you can be uh, familiarize yourself with the apa ni, step of operation. So, you, you all dah tahu apa operation yang you can assist nanti. So, you can go through your JB manual of surgery or uh, apa ni, your ampang initial guide. Tengoklah yang common tu, go through. Baca a few times, nanti you can eventually uh, get an idea. Bila you tengok operation tu, oh this is actually the step. So, okay. Okay. A anatomy physio ni, uh, bolehlah baca sikit-sikit sekarang. Okay. Bila, bila you go through the names of operation and steps tu. Okay. But it should be a habit when you want to assist surgery during husband as well. Sebab in between operation tu, you have you have actually time lah usually before next patient arrive after you bought notes tu. Okay. So, go through the uh, apa ni? Anatomy. Okay. Family is one watch video, okay? Uh, macam LSES tu banyak video, DNC. Okay, so another important advice from Mr. Aizad, okay? Uh, Houseman need to know how to prepare fashion for OJDS and colonoscopy as well. Okay, so read up on this. What you need to do to prepare your patient for you send, uh, kalau patient are planned for OJDS and colonoscopy. So what are the preparation you need to do for your patient lah. Okay. Okay. So Muhammad, uh, practice basic surgical skills. Yes. Uh, you boleh practice waktu waiting time ni. And usually kalau dekat hospital nanti memang uh, uh, regularly akan ada basic surgical basic surgical skills workshop, epistomy workshop. Okay. So you boleh uh, pergilah. Uh, so boleh berlatih hands on. Okay. And brush up your skills. Okay. Learn all the surgical instrument. Yes. The common ones uh, you kena tahu. So 
uh, sedikit instrumen ni senang je. Kalau you scrub early ataupun in between the cases tu, you can ask your scrub nurse. Okay, so scrub nurse ni adalah nurse yang tolong bagi instrumen dekat surgeon. Uh, tolong uh, do all the instrument count, ghost count so they know the instrument well. Okay, so bolehlah tanya scrub nurse. Okay, especially operation yang ada specific instrument. Okay, haa. Uh -huh. Okay, Mr. Aizan. For me, surgical instrument that important is cutting scissors, maximum, retractor to hold tissue. So, at least you can pass to us when we are short of hand. Takut, ah, takut tak done kat misi nak tolong betul. Okay, yeah. so the common instruments you need to know lah. Yang specific-specific tu, yang rare sikit tu, nanti along the way you can learn. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Rifa, know your patient, yes. Please make a habit of knowing your patient. Malu tau sebab surgeon, surgeon when they want to operate on their patients, okay. So, I I start my first posting in surgery, okay. Sebab so, tu tagging tu because you stay after five, I always see my surgeon come after five o'clock to come and see the patient that they will need, they will, op, they will be operating tomorrow. So, uh, surgeon will speak to the patient, we explain the procedure, okay, make sure the pre-op investigation are normal, okay. So, you bayangkan lah kalau surgeon boleh come and see patient after five, takkan husband tak boleh buat, okay. For the sake of knowing your patient, for the sake of your learning, okay. Uh -uh. Okay, so Anna. How basic surgical, okay so your your basic surgical skill is how to do your uh, apa ni uh, suture lah, stitch lah okay. How to do a continuous suture, interrupted suture, at least the basic one lah okay. Lepas tu how to do the, your instrument tie, your hand tie, okay. those are the basic ones okay. Okay, very important uh, apa ni advice from Mr. Aizat okay. So during retraction, use your body to retract and avoid your head obstructing our view. Yes, okay. So you can start the like lengoh, okay. So these are the uh, the things that kadang-kadang you all tak perasan, okay. Um, but to avoid this, tag properly. You know, okay, tag with a good, very good senior houseman. So you, you choose lah sebab bila you tagging tu, uh, okay contoh, kalau um, you tagging dekat ONG kan dua minggu. Okay, so usually at least three, three nights, okay, you have to uh, tag in OT. So, you choose wisely lah, okay. So, tengok hari apa yang senior houseman yang baik, suka sangat ajar, MO yang baik, suka sangat ajar, then you choose. Okay, that day, uh, this day and this day, bila ada senior houseman dengan MO yang baik ni, I will go and uh, tag in OT. Okay, so you can learn properly. Okay, so how to prepare yourself, okay. So, arrange your OT orientation. Okay, so kalau dekat ward pun ada orientation, nak masuk OT, your first surgical base posting, you need to arrange for your OT orientation usually with the OT sister. Okay, so bila you dah jadi houseman ni, we are working, uh, tak ada orang akan arrange untuk you lah, your assessment you have to arrange yourself. OT orientation pun within your busy first two weeks of tagging in the first posting, you need to find time, arrange OT orientation. Okay, sebab um, I've heard quite a number of houseman yang tagging in surgical base department. Dia orang tak arrange untuk OT orientation. So, tagging dekat what je. Okay, so bila nak off tag, tak boleh off tag sebab you haven't tag in OT. So, kena extend tagging. So, please, you need to arrange your OT orientation and tag properly. Okay. Uh, know your case before assisting, know your procedure, know your instrument, know your anatomy. Okay, okay. And work on your basic surgery skills, especially kalau you dah tahu lah, okay, you akan start dengan surgery. Ataupun kalau sekarang you medical, you know your next posting is surgical base. So, work on your basic surgery skills lah. Okay. Go to workshops ke, just find apa ni, apa ni you punya surgery kit kan. Okay, and practice your surgical skills, okay. 
And last but not least, you need to know your team, your operating surgeon and their expectation. Okay. So different operating surgeon have different expectation. Okay. For example, some surgeon yang very strict, they really want their assistant to prepare patient properly. The scrub, the pain and rip, so they, they come one surgeon to scrub, they want to straight away cut. Okay. Tapi ada surgeon yang macam tak kisah. Okay. We can scrub together, we can paint together, we can drape together. Okay. So you, 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 you need to know your, your superior and your team. Sama kan macam dekat what? You kena tahulah MO kalau macam ni apa dia punya expectation. Apa yang um, dia work style, apa yang dia orang tak suka, okay. So you will need to try to avoid that, okay. So the the same rule apply when you work in OT lah, okay. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Aizad, basic surgical skills ni, kalau during minor surgery dengan MMO line best, yes. Yeah. So kalau emergency OT, uh, surgeon tak ada dengan MMO je kan and it is not a uh, Uh, unstable patient and no rush tak ada next patient yang book OT dah okay so you can have uh, your own time to practice like it hand tie okay so that will be a good opportunity for you all to practice okay so there in us do we as he should also assist to do procedure in pits posting like suctioning Okay, if you mean suctioning of newborn after delivery, yes. Okay, it's part of your newborn resuscitation. Okay, uh, so you need to know uh, how to do lah. Okay, hmm. but usually neonatal resuscitation ni you don't, you won't be doing alone lah. Okay, you do with your MO. Okay, so with that I think, um, okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, I shall end this session tonight. Thank you everyone for joining the session. Okay, I hope it has been uh, beneficial to uh, give you a better idea on what we expect from you when you are in OT. Okay, so we'll start our new departmental online course on ONG and also orthopedics next week. Okay. Uh, so we'll have a uh, live teaching uh, through Zoom and recording will be available for your uh, revision later lah. Okay, so for ONG, our date, uh, our session will be on Friday, Friday night so to 9 to 11. So we'll have your specialist sharing with you for five consecutive weeks or five consecutive uh, Friday. So we'll cover... Um, Uh, about five, uh, 50%, percent, okay, half of mandatory in uh, topics in ONG. So out of your 16 uh, mandatory topics in ONG, kita akan cover half the, the the common ones, the most important ones lah, okay. This is about your label, first stage, second stage, third stage, okay, GDM, PIH and also important kind of topic like, like early pregnancy loss, hyperemesis, hyperem, Okay, and VTE. Okay, so we'll open up the registration in few days uh, together with orthopedic um, online course as well. Okay, so um, for those who are expecting next session intake in early March, eh, early May, early April, sorry, before puasa atau after raya usually akan ada satu lagi um, session intake. Okay, this will be a good opportunity to, for you to prepare yourself. Okay. Um, bila next course uh, usually, I think next course will be end of the year lah Okay So if you're expecting Show intake uh, this year Anytime this year Okay we advise you to join lah Okay 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 Another um, Advice from Mr. Aizat Mr. Aizat is one of our speaker For, for surgical crash course. Okay. InsyaAllah lepas raya surgical pula. Okay. So uh, if my staff would like to ask my house officer before op, uh, what what are the indication for this operation? Investigation necessary, antibiotic, blood reserve. Okay. So during operation, for example, tell me 
blood supply of thyroid and macam you kena viva lah auto operation this is very common okay what nerve complication uh, okay so benda-benda yang biasa lah okay uh, very common things okay then I will ask why need to do this surgery then I'll focus on operating after op if I'm happy enough with the half with officer I sometimes will write myself and tissue fast after that okay so uh, make your Uh, super you happy. This is uh, much, uh, the, the same rules apply kalau you dekat uh, work juga. Okay. So if you do your job well, okay, and everything runs smoothly, we have more time to teach you and we'll be very happy to teach because we know you are a very proactive houseman. You know you have done your job well. Okay. So kita ada extra time, we will be happy to teach lah. Okay. Uh-huh.